Shalom, beloved. Once again, you are welcome to Rematic with Pastor Jerry. It's been a while. I traveled to South Africa and I've been back and I've been busy with our new building. But God has been good and God has been faithful. And I bring greetings from South Africa to everyone. And I want to thank God for his powerful move in South Africa. The Lord did mighty, wonderful, miraculous things for his glory. The Lord did awesome things beyond our widest imagination, beyond what we prayed for. To him be all the glory. And I thank him for joining mercies. And I thank him for every one of you that was praying, supporting, liking, sharing, <laughs> and with us, you know. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You shall not lose your reward in the mighty name of Jesus. And since I came from South Africa, I, I felt I've been flowing in the air. <laughs> Glory to God. That the Lord, when the Lord uses, if, when he borrow a Peter, uh, borrowed Peter's vessel for, to, 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 to preach the gospel, Peter left, you know, with a boat feed. And that is the way I felt coming back from South Africa. The Lord borrowed my boat and used it to touch life, say, and I came back, feed, refresh, full, and abundance of glory and grace and power and faith and confidence in God. Hallelujah. To the praise and glory of his name. And today I want to bring a word to us by the power of his spirit upon my life. And I pray that the word will become flesh for you. And I pray that my teaching and preaching will not be enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and power, that the faith of you who hears me will not rest in the wisdom of me, but in the power of God. I love and appreciate you. This is the word of the Lord. It, this was triggered as I was reading my devotion and I saw this verse. You know, so, and uh, in the verse is uh, Jeremiah chapter 39. Jeremiah chapter 39, verse 15 to 18. Let me read it. He said, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of the prison, saying, The word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go and speak to Abedmelech the Ethiopian, saying, Excuse me, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Kalabaya, Behold, I will bring my word. Blessed be his holy name. Be Father, blessed be your holy name. <laughs> Behold, I will bring my words upon the city, upon this city for evil, and not for good. And they shall be accomplished in that day before thee. But I will deliver thee in that day, said the Lord. And thou shalt not be given unto the land of the men of whom thou art afraid. For I will surely deliver thee, and thou shalt not fall by the sword. But thy life shall be for a prey unto thee, because thou hast put thy trust in me, said the Lord. I want to talk to us about the message I titled, Divine Because, <laughs> for divine intervention. Divine Because, for divine intervention. Oskabranda Mashida Koba. See, as believers... Sometimes we make the mistake that because we are children of God, everything should just go well. And sometimes we think because you are a servant of God, things should just go well. Or because you are born again. Now, you know, let things just go well. Because you pray, you know, something. Now, nah. it's beyond that. As a child of God, there are things we do. That make God say, because of this, because of this that you have done, <laughs> for this that you have done. So that is what I'm talking about. This divine because, for divine intervention. There are things we do that because of those things we find favor with men and with God. And I want to talk about it. That the Bible talks about Jeremiah being locked up in the courtroom. In the midst of all the ordeal, God prophesied to the nation of Israel that you have turned from my ways, you and your kings, and I am sending you to captivity. 
He preached, sent his prophet, preached to them night and day. They did not heed what the prophet was saying. And when I been, when Jeremiah was put in prison, then Abimelech, who was an Ethiopia, who was a slave in the house, he was he took the word of God seriously and he acknowledged Jeremiah as the prophet of the Lord and took care of Jeremiah against the wish of the king. And because she trusted, he trusted in the Lord. And in the midst of all this ordeal that the king has, the king of Babylon has come, has broken the wall and, 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 and the kings have been arrested, nobles have been slaughtered. The word of the Lord went forth to a particular man a word in season for a particular man. Maybe you are the particular man that this word is coming to. This is the word of the Lord for you. The word of the Lord said to Jeremiah, Go speak to Abedimelech the Ethiopia. The Lord has sent me to come speak to you. He said, Thus said the Lord. This is who is speaking. It is the God of Israel. Blessed be his holy name. <laughs> Is the God of Israel, the God of transformation, the God who chooses, who calls, who bless, my avatar, the God who does wonders, the God who does miraculous things. Oh, mosquito, yabuto. He doeth great and mighty and unsearchable things without number. He said, I am the God of Israel, and I am the one speaking, the God of transformation, Karabaya. The God who turned Jacob into Israel. He said, I'm the one who is speaking. Wow. He said, behold, I will bring my word. He said, he will bring his word to pass. God brings his word to pass. And he said, that my word shall, shall be accomplished in your day. The word of God is an instrument of accomplishment. Wow. The word of the Lord is an instrument of accomplishment. When the Lord speaks, it is an instrument and it accomplishes the things that God has sent it for. God does not speak for nothing. Whatever God says stands. Mm. And the word of the Lord for Abedimelech was, I will deliver you, said the Lord. You shall not be given to the men that you fear. The word of the Lord is come to you that the Lord will deliver you. The Lord will deliver you. This is the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord has come to you that he will deliver you from the things that you fear. He said, I will deliver you from the things you fear. So I'm speaking to someone right now. This is a remnant for you. That the Lord is saying to you, fear not. He will deliver you from those things which you fear. The condition is what I'm about to reveal right now. God said to Abimelech, I will deliver you. You shall not see your fear. You shall not see your wretchedness. Oh, my Lord. You shall not see your wretchedness. Verse 18 says, For I will deliver thee, and you shall not fall by the sword. The judgment is not for you, Abimelech. Why? He said, because... He said, your life shall be a prey for you because you have put your trust in me, said the Lord. Wow. The Lord delivered those who trust in him. <laughs> he is able to deliver. He will deliver. And he will yet deliver. Who will the Lord deliver? The Lord delivered those who trust in him. He said, Abimelech, I am delivering you. I am giving your life back because this is a divine because. Number one divine because. He said, because thou hast put your trust in me. There is something that happens when we put our trust in God. Hmm. This reminds me of Numbers 13 and 14. When Caleb and Joshua, two of the twelve, that came to spy the land, came back. The ten of them said, we are not able to take the land. The land is good. 
but there are giants in the land. We are not able to take the land. Which is said in our eyes, we were gra grasshoppers, so were we in their eyes. But Joshua and Caleb quieted the people and said to them, the land that we search out is a land indeed flowing with milk and honey. And they said, if God be for us, he shall deliver us and give us the land. The adversary, they are bread for us. Your perspective in life matters. The way you see. Oh, Rabbi Shid Kilimodo. I was talking to my daughter. I was listening to music on the, on the, on the, in the car when we were going to church. The music said, it said, Lord, help us to see me. Help me to see me the way you see me. Lord, help me to see me the way you see me. To be sure that I do not see myself from my past experience. I do not see myself from my weakness. But see myself from the eyes of the Lord. The ten came back. They saw themselves in the eyes of the giant. The eyes of the enemy. The enemy did not see them. But because of their low self-esteem and their insecurity. They said they were like grasshopper in their own eyes. So were they in the eyes of the enemy. And the enemy did not see them. So they lied. Wow. But these two, Caleb and Joshua said, no, 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 no. They are bread for us. God is on our side. He said, their defense is the part of them. Let us go at once and possess the land. Spirit of faith is what is required in this, in the, in this season. Spirit of faith. Spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. Glory to God. The spirit of faith. And they said, we are well able to take the land. Let us go at once. And this is what the Lord said. And the people decided, we will stone you. You see, when you walk by faith, critics will be there to stone you. <laughs> but you must take your ground. But the glory of God always defends those who trust in him. The Bible said, when the people spoke of stoning them, the glory of the Lord appeared. When you stand in faith, God will defend you. The glory of the Lord appeared. And the Lord said, mm, mm. The Lord said, let me take it. Verse 21. He said, but as truly, Numbers 14, 21, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracle, which I did in Egypt, in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. So doubt and not believe provoke God. It results to a breach of promise. Mm. God said, because they, they, they doubted, they refused to trust me, they tempt me. He said, they will not see the land. In verse 24, he said, but my servant Caleb, because, because, somebody say because. This is a divine because for divine intervention. He said, because he has another spirit with him. And as follow me fully, him will I bring into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Wow. God said, The rest are not going into the promised land. He said, But Caleb and Joshua, because they had to know that spirit with him, with them. He said, because they had another spirit with them, because they had wholly followed me, I will bring them into the land. So it's the same thing with Abimelech and Caleb and Joshua. God said to Abimelech, because you, uh, uh, because you have trusted me, I will deliver you. And now God is saying to Caleb, because you have followed me with all of your hearts, I will bring you into the land. So this is a divine because that Cause for divine intervention that made God move is to trust God. 
is to follow God wholly with all of your hearts. Don't serve God part-time. Don't serve God part-time. No. Don't serve God the way you think God should be served. Don't give to God the way you think you should give. Do things God's way. God's force is the way to rest. Wholeheartedly serve the Lord. With all your heart, with all your might, love the Lord. And the Lord will deliver you. And the Lord will bring you to your desired heaven. The Lord will bring you to your promised land. That is what it takes. It's a because. This is a divine because for divine intervention. A because. Something you do that make heaven respond. That make heaven react. That make heaven move on your behalf. It's a divine because. What you do, what you say, the stand you take, the prayer you pray, what you gave, there is something that you do that pleases the Lord. And God said, because of this. It's a divine because. It's not when men say because of this. This is God saying because of this. Because, 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 because. For this reason. When the, when the lady with the alabaster box poured it upon Jesus, Jesus said, because of this you have done, wherever the gospel is preached, this you have done shall be proclaiming remembrance of you. So there is a divine because for divine intervention. Because you trust him. Because you wholeheartedly follow him. God is calling us back to trust him. Like Abimelech did and God delivered him. In this time and season, God's glory is here to defend us. But we must trust him. God's glory is here to lead us to the promised land. But we must wholeheartedly follow him. i give you one more. <laughs> Psalm 91, which is my favorite. Divine because. Harababaya. Look at this. It's Psalm 91. The Bible said in verse 14, God said, Because he has set his love upon me. Because, because of this, not for any other reason. Because he, you have set your love upon me, he said to the psalmist, and to you and to I. Because he has set his love upon me. Because, because, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. Number one. Number two, I will set him on high. Divine promotion. Divine protection, divine promotion. He said, because... This is another holy because again. Another divine because for divine intervention. He said, because he has known my name. Karabaya. The amplifier said, because you have a personal knowledge of my mercy, kindness. You, because you trust and rely on me. Wow. He said, then he shall call upon me. And I will answer him. This is divine response, divine answer. And I will be with him. That is divine presence. And I will deliver him. That is divine deliverance. And honor him. That's divine honor. Kalabaya. He said, with long life will I satisfy him. And show him my salvation. Why? Because of these two holy because. He said, because you have set your love upon me. Because you know my name. Ya karabada ya you respect and honor and reverence my name. He said, because of this, we love you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We lay our life before, before your throne. Holy is our Lord. Glory to his name. You see that? It's that because you have set a love upon me. 
because you have set your love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver you. I will set you on high. Kalavaya. I will deliver you. I will set you on high. He said to Abimelech, I will deliver you. He said to Caleb, Caleb, I will bring you to the promised land. I will bring you to your desired heaven. What does it take? Is it divine because? Because you trust me. Because you wanted to follow me. Because you set your love upon me. Because you know my name. Wow. These are conditions for divine intervention. When, when you trust God, he's able to deliver those who trust in him. When you heartedly follow the Lord, the Lord will lead you to your desired heaven. When you set your love upon the Lord, the Lord will set you on high. Karabaya. It's when you reverence the name of the Lord, when you have intimacy and fellowship with, with him and, and reverence his name, he said he shall give you access to answer prayer. And he will be with you in trial and deliver you and honor you. This what are we looking for? This is this basically cover everything in life that we need. So there is a divine call to trust God. There is a divine call to wholeheartedly follow him. There is a divine call to set our love upon him. There is a divine call to, to know his name, to know him, to know the wonder of his person. There is a divine call. As we seek this thing, as we pursue this thing, the Lord said, I will deliver you. I will bring you to the promised land. You will experience the promise. You will not know the breach of my promise that the children of Israel I did. He said, I will deliver you. I will set you on high. You know, I will be with you. And you, when you call, I will answer. He said, with long life, I will satisfy you and reveal, show you my salvation. Glory to God. This is awesome. This is wonderful. Praise be to his name. I receive this for myself, Lord. I receive this. So don't serve God on your terms. Serve God on his terms. It is dangerous to serve God just anyhow. Mm. It is too dangerous to serve God. To say you are a Christian and take God for granted. It is too dangerous. You are either in or out. You can't be lukewarm in this day and age. When everything. Christ is returning. Christ is returning. Everything is rounding up for the return of Christ. Are you rapture ready? Are you ready to take off? Are you ready? If Jesus comes tonight, will you make heaven? Let's be ready for the rapture. Let's do the work of the Lord with all of our heart. Let's give, let's sow, let's pray. In the name of the Lord, let's stick with the word of God. I love you and I appreciate you. And I pray for you that the Lord continue to strengthen you, that the Lord continue to manifest himself in your life. I pray that God will give you wisdom from above. The wisdom that is not earthly, not sensual, not devilish, but the wisdom that is from above, that is pure, peaceable, easily to be entreated, that the Lord will fill your soul with his divine wisdom, the principal thing, that you will know what to do, know when to speak, know where to go. The Lord order your step this season in the name of Jesus. I love you. And I'll see you next time. God bless you. Thank you.